as you can see, Rue wanted to accompany me for this video today. So if you hear anything that doesn't sound like me, it's her. <laughs> Greetings loved ones and welcome back to my channel or hello if you are new and just happen to be watching a bunch of wedding videos and I'm one of them. <laughs> my name is Megan. My married name is Megan Orstrom, although I do use my maiden name Megan Hughes for my online persona and I got married on June 4th 2022 at a beautiful love filled outdoor wedding at my now husband's family home here in Virginia and for those of you wondering because I got this question a lot we have had 125 people at our ceremony and 117 at our reception because some people couldn't stay for the whole thing. Blah 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 blah. Here we are. This video was so highly requested by all of you to just do a what I wish I knew before my wedding or how I really felt about my wedding kind of a video. So it's going to be all of those things today, but I figured that I would actually structure it in this kind of a chaptered way for you. So it's like easily accessible, I don't know, as a resource for you guys to use. So I'm going to start off here after the intro and do a what I wish I knew. So just like some top tips of what I wish people told me before my wedding. And then I'm going to move into the best decisions that we made for our wedding, whether it was like pre-planned or not. And then I'll move into like my wedding flops or what I kind of wish went differently at the wedding, just to kind of give you guys some kind of a reference point of what you could focus more on or give more attention to that maybe you're not thinking about as much and to just kind of air out my wedding regrets and leave them in the past, all right? And then I may end off this video just answering some of your questions on Instagram because I did ask you guys on there if you had anything that you really wanted me to talk about in this video. And I think in this, I'm gonna cover most of it, but if I happen to leave stuff out, I may just breeze through your Instagram suggestions and try to add some stuff in at the end, but let's get into it. The number one thing that I wish I knew before my wedding is that while weddings are primarily for you and your partner, they're not just for you and your partner. Elopements are just for you and your partner. I know that may sound like a bit of a silly point to start off with, but let me explain. So in this what I wish I knew portion of the video, I originally planned to start off with the cliche saying of, just remember, nothing matters on your wedding day except you and your partner. But after speaking to my husband last night, we both agreed that weddings are just so much more than that. <laughs> They're really the blending of two families, each who come with their own traditions, religions, ceremonial practices, and all of those types of things that make you a family with history, you know? And on the wedding day, the couple is usually expected to at least express or acknowledge some of those traditions to keep them going, you know what I mean? Unless you are trying to have an untraditional wedding. And I get it, it can be overwhelming when you're planning a wedding and there are just too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, but I'm not saying that you have to uphold every single tradition that your family has ever had or any suggestion that anybody gives you. For example, we didn't do the traditional garter toss but some people asked about it. They were like, are you doing a garter toss? Look at our garter toss photos. And I was like, not doing that. I just feel weird about it, but love the photo, you know, live, laugh, love garter toss. <laughs> I don't know. I just believe that even if you choose to omit certain things from your wedding, it's good to at least like consider what other people are saying or suggesting to you just so you're like, all right, I hear you, I hear you, because some people are gonna have a lot of things that wanna be heard, okay? Especially if you have a family who just has a lot of traditions or input or whatever. And I just say that because I wish that somebody had told me that before planning my wedding, because I was told, it's just about you, it's just about your partner, and then when it came to actually planning my wedding, I was like, it's not, because like so many people have so much to say about our wedding day, which can be stressful at times, but also you just kinda take everything with a grain of salt and be like, love you, grandma, but I'm not doing that, you know? And just pick and choose what you wanna do, but also find ways to honor your family and include them. And just for clarification, I'm not saying that you should plan your entire day around what someone else wants for you. So let me just give a clear example of what I mean. 
All right, so I was raised Catholic, although I don't label myself as a Catholic now. And when I first started planning my wedding, my dad mentioned to me that he would love if there was a prayer at some point in our ceremony because we weren't getting married in the Catholic church. And I basically just immediately shut him down and then talked about it to my partner, like he he ha ha, I can't believe he would even say that. And my partner was like, are you kidding me? Of course we can do that for your dad. Like he asked asked you nicely and I was like yeah he did actually ask me really nicely and I was kind of a dick about it but we ended up having my dad do a little prayer over us at our ceremony and it ended up being one of my favorite ceremony memories because it was just so pure and nice and I'm sure he felt good about it and we felt good about it and it was just good overall so I'm just saying that sometimes even if it wasn't in your original wedding plan that you had from the beginning you can incorporate some things in just in the name of love okay now all of that put together was kind of point number one smushed together but it was a good preface for point number two, which is enjoy your engagement for as long as you want, okay? Because literally the night that we got engaged, we were met with suggestions of what time of year to have the wedding, what to put on our registry, etc., etc. And I was just like, damn, can I have a minute, please? And I did take a minute. We got engaged in December and then we didn't start planning until like the following June, kind of, very lightly planning then. But I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. You know, right when you get engaged, people are just so excited for you and it's like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna wear? Are you gonna wear short length dress, long length dress? What kind of lace? Are you gonna do lace beading? You know, a veil? Are you gonna wear a veil? A crown? What are you gonna wear? And you're like, oh, I don't know, man. I'm just enjoying the ring. I mean, look at this view. Okay. Okay, so just enjoy your engagement. You can have a long engagement, a short engagement, whatever you want, because you will know when it's time to start planning, when it feels right for you. And like I said, I personally started planning about a year out of our date. Number three is just try to get good sleep before your wedding and eat well on the actual wedding day leading up to your ceremony and all of the events. And I say this because I did not sleep well at all the night before my wedding, really just because I had the pre-wedding jitters and I was so excited and nervous and just a bundle of emotions and I was sleeping alone, which I'll get to later, but I had like a stress canker sore and I literally have a photo on my camera roll on like the morning Morning of my wedding day at like 4 30 of me showing the canker sore and being like how did this happen and I think maybe I was kind of in and out of sleep from the hours of like 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. and then I was just like get I'm gonna wake up and I like meditated down by the ceremony site and had all these grounding practices but really I was just really nervous <laughs> so um, I had a lot of feelings it was really hard for me to eat because my tummy was just a uh, butterfly and everywhere. So that leads me to tip number four, which is don't mistake butterflies for a tummy ache. Because I did that. I was drinking Pepto-Bismol like it was a cocktail. I was like, absolutely. Because I just wanted to enjoy the pre-wedding getting ready portion with my bridesmaids, you know? So I was just trying to get my stomach right. I was drinking my anxiety tincture. I had some kombucha. I had coffee, water, all of the beverages, Pepto. And then my wedding planner, Katie, bless her heart, she was just like, your tongue is gonna turn black from the bismuth. Please stop drinking Pepto-Bismol, okay? And I was like, but it's the only thing helping. And she was like, you are mistaking having like a stomach ache with butterflies. You just have butterflies. You just need to like, you know, take a deep breath, ground yourself. And I tried all those grounding things, you know, like I mentioned before, meditating all the things. I like threw a rock into the river by where we were getting married in the morning and was like, let my worries float away with that rock. <laughs> It was so dramatic, dude. Like, I just had a lot of feelings. And you're allowed to have feelings, okay? I'm just saying, like, don't get mistaken and think that you're having some kind of a, you know, nausea or something like that just because you're excited to get married. <laughs> Number five is you don't have control over people and what they do at your party or, you know, if they're one of your vendors and they do something that wasn't in the plan, you don't have control over that. They did it and you just package it up and you're like, that happened, move on with my life. And wedding mistakes, mistakes in quotes, they don't reflect on you as a couple. It's just like, all right, 
things happen, we move on. That's all you can do is think about it that way because you provided all the information to your vendors that you needed them to have. And if something went awry, then it went awry. And you're just like, ah, let it roll off the back. That being said though, I will still be spilling the tea on our wedding flops. <laughs> but that's in a different part of the video. I'm reading all of these off my phone, by the way, just so I don't forget, I like made an outline for this video, but number six, it's kind of cliche, but find moments to soak it all in. You just threw this big party together for yourselves and your closest loved ones, your family and friends, and you just need to remember how much time and effort you put into it and just look around and be like, damn, we really did that. Just remember to, breathe every now and again, breathe it all in, look around and be like, beautiful, just beautiful day, love it. <laughs> Number seven is don't put off planning your honeymoon if you plan to take one. It shouldn't be an afterthought or a rush. It should be a well-deserved break. And I felt like Finley and I just kept being like, oh, we'll plan that later. Oh, we'll plan that later. And then it was like two to three months before our wedding. And we were like, where are we even gonna go? Where do we wanna go? And flights can be more expensive and all that kind of stuff the longer you wait. So I just kind of wish that we didn't have that stress like as much leading up to the wedding and that we were doing more things for the honeymoon like maybe I don't know around six months out even before that I'm not going to give you like a specific timeline for you but I just know that we wished that we had spent more time on it sooner and our honeymoon was still lovely and beautiful just like our wedding day was still lovely and beautiful despite all of the little things that occur on a day when you throw a big party for people you know there's just things where it's what I wish I knew before. Like, had I known that I would have been stressed out about planning my honeymoon, I would have started it in freaking December. <laughs> but it is so good to go on a honeymoon and just be like, ah, oh, okay, now I can relax and have this like, I don't know, week or however long you take to just take in being newlyweds, you know, and enjoy it after the chaos of planning a wedding. In my case, for like a year, <laughs> it was just, it was great. Okay, so don't put it off. And lastly, before I get into our best decisions portion of the video, number eight was my mantra for the entire year leading up to my wedding, but you don't have to lose weight for your wedding. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You don't have to lose weight for your wedding, okay? I really needed that reminder. My dress is gonna be altered to me either way. And my husband is going to love me even if my arms are an eighth an inch bigger than they were last year. Like, we just, we don't need to worry about all that. We got enough to worry about, especially if you're planning your own wedding, you just whoop, wipe it aside. All right, sorry if the angle changed at all. My battery overheated in my camera and I had to take a second to cool it off but it's fine now. So let's get back into it and start on the best decisions that we made for our wedding. So number one was definitely hiring a wedding planner. I know that not everybody has this budgeted or even cares to hire a wedding planner, but for me, it made the most sense because I wasn't living in the area that I was getting married in. I was living across the country at the time. Now I live in Virginia where I did get married, but at the time I was living in Oregon. So I hired a wedding planner. Her name's Katie. She has a company called Tilly and Teal. And if you're in the DMV area, I highly suggest that queen, okay? Because now we're besties. And then they kiss. No, I'm just kidding. Jadge, everybody, just a joke, all right? Katie was definitely my number one favorite vendor, number one favorite hire. She made my life complete. She found pretty much all of our vendors for us and helped us just significantly in so many ways, big and small. And I got a friendship out of it, a friend for life. So I was overall so happy that we chose to hire a wedding planner. It just helped us so much with strategically organizing everything and getting everything like done on time. And we would have planning calls and go through all of the things. And she helped design the wedding with a design board. And I just felt like what she was asking for, for her price, she was just worth so much more than that. So we tipped a big, honey. So don't forget to tip your vendors as well if you really love them. I could talk about how great having a wedding planner was for forever, but that's definitely my number one best decision. And then the next one is my photo and video team, hiring both of them. So a lot of people just choose to have photos, which is fine if you don't wanna have a wedding video, but 
I make videos for a living and I really wanted to have a professional videographer at my wedding so that we could share all of the memories with you as well as have a high quality professional video to watch for years to come. And I also paid extra for them to include all of the raw footage on a hard drive for me so that I could have that to edit into a new video if I wanted to do that. So. Maybe I'll do that eventually. Uh, I am thinking about it. But my video team was actually my planner Katie's husband. So she suggested him and was like, totally won't be offended if you don't want to use him. And I was like, this man is a total slay. Love Jeff. And so we hired his company to do our wedding video and they were iconic. So shout out to Bassano Films loved them and then also like i mentioned before my photographer i was so happy to hire her for professional photos she did so much for us she did polaroids like physical polaroids scanned all of them did 35 millimeter film 120 millimeter film did digitals black and white of every single photo i mean our gallery is thousands of photos and they're all incredible she has such an eye and i just love her so much so rachel v king lifestyle i believe on instagram she slayed absolutely slayed and she was so cool. She had good assistants, second shooters, just all of the things. So definitely a really, really good decision to hire all of those people. They were top tier. And then the next best thing that we did was anything DIY. I just really suggest trying to DIY some of your decor or having just some aspects of your wedding. You have a hand in them. Like I really wanted to do even more than I had a hand in. So some of the DIY stuff that we did was like making our wedding arch. Instead of just an arch, we did a fairy portal. So it was kind of like a big intertwined circle that we made on the property that we were going to get married at. And it's still there, still up in the forest. And it's so cute and it was just such great memories. We made it with Finley's cousin, Charlie, who you guys actually met in Vlogmas. He's an icon architect, love him so much. So was really happy about that. And we got to like scout out the trees and, you know, cut them down and the men put it together. And I was just sitting in a swing bench being like, yeah, you do that. And also I did these like DIY leaf place cards for our head table. So everywhere else was like, you could choose where you sat. But for our head table, we did like assigned seating. So I got all of these leaves off of a rhododendron bush on the property. And then we just used like a white marker pen and it just turned out so cute. I loved them so much. And we also cut all of the wood pieces from the property around here for our center pieces. So it was like these wood circular slabs on all of the tables so that we could put, you know, vases or lanterns on all of them. And I just thought that it turned out really good. So I just wish that we had more DIYs that we had a hand in. Um, our planner did some of them, surprised us with some things as well. And we just like sourced stuff off of Etsy for some things or got them from like warehouse, like wedding warehouses um, and borrowed from friends of Katie's. So that's why it was also really good to have a wedding planner because she had connections to like those big easels for mirrors. Uh, we had a calligrapher write on all these like gold ornate mirrors to place around as like signage and stuff. And that was really great, but I didn't physically write on them because my handwriting is terrible. But yeah, I just loved all the DIY stuff. The next best thing was having a free place for our wedding party to stay. So this house that we're living in here, which is my in-laws guest house, all of the groomsmen stayed here and it was just incredible that they had a free place to stay because your wedding party already has to pay for so much from like the batch weekend to like if you do a bridal shower to travel and food and getting there and you know if you have them pay for their dresses or their suits or accessories like there's just so much that goes into being in a bridal party so just having a free place for them to crash was perfect so we kept all of the groomsmen here at this guest house and then at my in-laws house we put all of the brides maids and their partners as well. So we allowed partners to come too. And it was just incredible, especially to have everybody like around to be able to like party afterwards. It was awesome. So highly suggest doing that if you have the space. Or we also considered having people camp on the property too. We ended up not doing it. And I don't remember why. It just kind of fell out. We were like, oh, Never mind. We have enough beds for everybody. So nobody has to camp. And then we got like hotel blocks for other people. But 
I do think that's a really good idea. I'm also really happy that we slept apart the night before, got ready separately on the actual wedding day, and then just had our first look at the altar. I know that first looks are really popular and they're also a time saver. And if you wanna do one, that's totally fine. But just for us, I really enjoyed having our first look at the altar and just having that stare that glance, you know, as I walk down the aisle and I'll always remember his face and just all of those cute little things. So I really enjoyed doing that. Speaking of a big reveal though, I also enjoyed having a reception reveal, which if you're unfamiliar with this, basically my wedding planner put together like the whole reception with her team, right? And then after the ceremony, after we took like our couple's portraits and family portraits and all those things and people went up to cocktail hour, we got blindfolded and taken on the back of a gator which is just like a little buggy and we drove up the property and then our planner Katie just took our hands and walked us over to the reception tent and then she took off the blindfolds and we were like oh my god and our photographer was there to get our faces and reactions too which was so special and it was just so nice to have that moment to ourselves to be like oh my god this is everything that i've been seeing on my design boards for months and it's here now and she also surprised us with a airstream photo booth which we didn't have the budget for and i still to this day don't know where the money came from or if it was like a favor of hers from a friend but it was there and i cried so highly recommend having a reception reveal it's just so amazing to be able to walk around the reception and be like this is incredible and it was good to get a look over before all of the people came from cocktail hour into the reception tent because i was like why is the fire hydrant right behind my chair it's gonna be in all the photos can we move it to the side thank you i had my bridezilla moment with the fire hydrant but no there's just little things where it's like aesthetically you want it to to look a certain way so i was like move it please behind the bar i think is where we put it and it was so much better there but you're legally required to have them so i'm glad that we did don't want to have a fire on the property that would be terrible also really recommend having a moment to yourselves during the reception where you can just kind of sneak away and maybe watch the sunset we did it when we were taking sunset portraits down by this little pond and we just had such a great time we were just walking arm in arm down there and even though it was like with our photography and videography team it felt like we were the only two people in the whole wide world and it was so great too because you don't like see your partner all day if unless you do the first look you know what i mean early on but i hadn't seen him until like the ceremony and then we were at the reception and i was like how are you like what's been going on this is so awesome so you just have that little moment to like reconvene and you know just soak it all in like i was saying before but also if your photographer offers sunset portraits highly recommend. And then I'm also really happy that we had a live band because we were talking about it. We're like, do we go DJ? Do we go live band? And Finley was very gung ho about the band. So I was like, you do it. You know, I'm giving you that task. And I really loved having the live music and they played a lot of our favorite songs. But then we also will get into the things that I regret because there was some great things about the band and some bad things about the band. Not bad as in they performed badly, but just like things that I wish I did differently with them. Let's get into all of the things that were kind of a flop at the wedding. Uh, first thing I regret is not having a sleepover with a friend the night before my wedding, all right? Because all of my girlies were on the property, but I still slept alone in a bed that had enough room for someone else. And I just wish that I had somebody come and sleep with me who maybe didn't have their boyfriend in town staying with them or something. Because I just had so many thoughts the night before. And like I said, you know, earlier I was up so late, just tossing and turning and I just had nobody to talk to. And so I was like texting Finley and stuff. But in hindsight, I just really wish that I had asked one of my girlies to sleep in the bed with me so that I could have been like, I'm a little nervous, bestie, what's going on? You know, getting everything out like word vomit rather than actually thinking I had to vomit. <laughs> it just would have been a better decision. So looking back, I'm like, I wish I did that, but you can't change the past. On all of these things, you can't change the past. I just think it's good to talk about. So some of you may take heed 
Is that the right term to use there? Take heed and don't do what I did. The next thing I regret is not being more attentive and observant during family portraits because something occurred that I am upset about and my mom's upset about it, my mother-in-law's upset about it, we're all upset about it. But basically, somehow, some way, we had a list of all of the people who were supposed to be in the family portraits when we were taking them, but Finley did not make it in my family portrait of me and my siblings and my parents. He is not there. I don't know where he was. There was a lot of people running around, you know, grandparents, siblings, parents, and people were still kind of trickling in and out trying to go up the hill to cocktail hour or stay down. So there was just like a lot of chaos and I wish that one of us had realized like that he wasn't in the photo because now he's not in the photo. I seriously have no idea how I didn't notice that my husband wasn't in the photo, but I was just like, <laughs> cheese. Anyways, that not only happened with Finley, but also in our family portrait with Finley's family, my brother-in-law's not in that photo either. So we literally have no idea where he was. We asked him about it and he was like, yeah, where did I go? I think I went up to cocktail hour. <laughs> I was like, okay. There was a little just miscommunication there. And then also on the note of being more attentive during photos, you're just in your own world on your wedding day, which is lovely and amazing. But I wish that I had been more like, you don't have to be so far away. You can come in even if there's a camera around because some people are just kind of camera shy, which is fine. But I feel like in a lot of those moments that are like hyper photographed, some people were like, oh, I'll give them their space where I wanted them to be around us. So I wanted people to be around the dance floor for our first dance, but instead everybody went to their tables and was just kind of like standing at their table or like watching us, which was fine, you know, but also at the same time, I kind of wish it was more like close knit, not just for the photos, but like for the energy. But I didn't even notice. I was just like, woohoo, we're dancing. But that's probably just like a personal choice. Maybe some people are like, yeah, I want to have my main character moment and you go over there. <laughs> the next thing I regret is not having a B list of my guest list. So I just thought that it was like kind of a rude thing to do to like put people on a B list. But at the end of the day, I actually wish that we had that because we had a lot of COVID cancellations and no shows because a couple of people couldn't figure out their like travel plans to be able to actually make it to the wedding. Some people had like incidents where they broke down on the way and were literally unable to come. Yes, yeah, some people got COVID. Some people like RSVP that they were going to be at the actual reception and then they only came to the ceremony as well. So there were like empty seats around at some tables. And I almost wish that the people who were trying to protect me because I'm the bride and they didn't want to stress me out, I wish that somebody did tell me that they weren't going to be there so that I could have been like, yeah, you can bring your boyfriend who you haven't been with for more than a year. So that's why I didn't invite him because that's like the rule for the most part. I think it's either boyfriend of more than a year, you're living together or you're like engaged or married. You can have a plus one. And during the process of making my guest list, I was like reading all of these etiquette pages of like who gets a plus one and who doesn't and all this stuff. And there were like cousins in Finley's family who had new boyfriends and we were just like, no, you can't bring them. It's too new. But at the same time, I'm like, I wish that we had them there because the other person would have had more fun with them there and we had the empty seats you know and the food so i wish that we were a little bit more maybe untraditional or lenient with the guest list leading up to the days in the wedding where like if somebody was free and in town and had an outfit to wear they could have come, you know? And I know it sounds weird to some people because it's like very traditional and you're like not supposed to do that. But Finley and I both agreed that we wished that we did that where we weren't so like by the book with our guest list. So yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people who have gotten married in the past few years have experienced the same thing as me with like COVID cancellations and stuff, which is just out of your hands. Like I said, like you can't control other people's lives or what they do before your wedding or whatever, like sickness is gonna happen, incidents are gonna happen where people can't show up. And with the empty seats that those occurrences caused, I just wish I was able to kind of like have more of a hand in rearranging the tables, I guess, but we had already had the calligrapher make our table seating chart. So it was just kind of like, ah, 
<laughs> what can you do? But people ended up at the reception, obviously, like going up to dance or changing tables or walking around and not even sitting down again. So it just really depends. The next thing is a really long story and should have been regret number one. The people who watch me on Twitch have already heard this story in full when I came back from my wedding and I like did a full wedding recap, but I really just don't want to harp on this too long. I'm just going to kind of sum it up as our transportation was my biggest regret, all right? So we had hotel blocks, people had buses that were going from the hotel to the venues. So we had two separate venues, one for our Ren Faire rehearsal dinner the night before, and then one for our wedding and like the family home. So there were two locations that the bus was going to pick up and drop people off at, and there were also two different hotels. Ugh, this is so annoying to think about. The first night, right after my actual walkthrough rehearsal of the ceremony, I went back up because I had left my phone in my room and I was about to go to my rehearsal dinner and I have all these missed calls and it was from the bus driver and he was really confused and I was just like hey like I'm the bride you're not supposed to use me as the point person I'm about to go to my rehearsal dinner you should speak to um, the hostess of this party who was my mother-in-law or my wedding planner who we didn't even hire to use for that night of the rehearsal dinner which in hindsight she ended up working because of this occurrence but he was just so confused and didn't know what was going on and ended up never picking up the second hotel guests he never got them. And so I wasn't looking at my phone. And then hours later, when I get home after the party, I have these messages like, hey, how am I supposed to get there? Like, you know, nobody came to get us. We're at hotel number two, whatever. And I was like, what? Uh, but I had obviously heard about it too, because I noticed that some people during our family portraits weren't there. Anyways, I'm getting too much into this, but he fucked up. He never went to get our set. He had a sheet of where he was supposed to go. And he, I don't know how it happened, but getting Reginald, Reggie. But the biggest wedding regret was allowing that same driver to be the driver on our actual wedding day. And this was one of the most embarrassing moments of my entire wedding. And it's just super unfortunate, but my wedding planner briefed him. She was like, here are videos of the driveway. Here is what it looks like. Here is where you're going to stop. Here is a map. Like he had all of the tools and on the wedding day, right as my dad took my arm and we were about to walk down to the ceremony my wedding planner got a call on her phone because there was also very spotty service at the property so some of the calls weren't going through and she had one come through right before we went down and it was the bus driver and he was like hey i'm not there i don't know where i am there's a bunch of guests i haven't dropped them off and they're on my bus and she was like what where are you and me and my dad were just like what's happening <laughs> and my grandma was on the bus dude and so many other people and then also when he dropped them at the bottom of the driveway where they were supposed to go he didn't direct them where he was told to direct them so some people just ended up like walking the length of the property walking up hills coming from all different corners into the ceremony and it just really affected the processional because we were waiting on my grandma who was in the processional who was going to walk down the aisle to her seat and stuff and yeah, it was just so embarrassing. And we ended up getting a full refund, thank, but that was like, number one, should have been my biggest regret on this list, but I'm not numbering them in any kind of way. But yeah, that was really humiliating and terrible. And I don't know what happened, but he just was awful. <laughs> and it's just like, at the end of the day, that doesn't reflect on me that the driver just like didn't know what was going on and was driving to a rural location. And people ended up getting there at some point. It was just like delayed. The ceremony was delayed because of that. So yeah, but if you're having a rural wedding like me, then you really need to dial in that transportation and make it easy and have a trusted company who has good reviews. And I'm going to move on from that because it bums me out to talk about the next thing is so fucking silly, but it is something that I see in photos and I'm like, damn, I wish I had noticed that at my reception reveal before all of the guests came in and the photographer took photos of all this stuff. But I highly recommend doing this, reusing your bridesmaids bouquets if you have a bridal party and putting them in vases on your head table if you have a big long head table like we did. But because we did that, all of the bridesmaids bouquets were like tied with 
ribbon really tightly, you know, so they could hold the stems. And the vases that they were put in were not skinny tubes. They were like big, wide vases. So the bouquets just kind of flopped to the sides on the table. And I don't know, it's just something that I see in the head table photos. And Finley always makes fun of me. He's like, literally nobody noticed her carrot other than you, but I did aesthetically speaking, and I wish that we had gotten skinnier bases. <laughs> it sounds so fucking stupid when I say it out loud. Anyways, also if you're having a wedding in a rural location, I regret not telling my band to download a playlist to play during their breaks. So our band was contracted to have a 15 minute break every hour, I believe. And during that time and during our dinner time, they played the same like generic wedding song playlist that I had no idea they were gonna play. It wasn't like them playing the songs, it was them playing it on an iPhone. And I literally had made a wedding playlist and I just don't know how they like never got it. Like I sent it to them, but they didn't download it before coming to the property, which like I said, has shitty reception. So they were just playing what was downloaded on their phone. And Lindsay at one point went up to them and was like, hey, can you play this song? Like gave them a request to switch it up because it ended up looping. Like the same playlist started over again when we were eating and I was like, we already heard this song. Like what's going on, you know? But yeah, they couldn't play requests or anything like that because they just never hooked up to the Wi-Fi. but there's free Wi-Fi at the house with no password. So it was just kind of like an oversight in that area. And as somebody who cares a lot about music, it did bug me. And also I had a list of songs that I really wanted my band to play. And they maybe played about four or five of them, but they played a lot of songs that we did not want. Like just random stuff that they thought maybe like based off of the ages of the crowd, what would be good. But I was like, I do not want to hear Hotline Bling right now. Okay, like a live version. I know when that Hotline Bling. I was like, what is happening? Like make it stop. <laughs> it was so bad. Billy and I both were like, and why did Hotline Bling come on? And they also had like this downloaded pop playlist of songs to play during their breaks. And one of the songs was Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. And as a Swifty, I can say that is my least favorite song of hers. And Lindsay agrees. And so Lindsay tried to lighten the mood of it playing while they were on break and literally did the worm. <laughs> because she was like, it was just an awkward vibe, okay? I didn't know why it was playing, so I just did the worm. And unfortunately, I was in the bathroom. I only took like two bathroom breaks in my actual wedding gown and I was in the bathroom during that time. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> Why didn't I see that? Now I just have a video of Lindsay doing the worm at my wedding. Next regret is Finley not printing or handwriting his vows. Because in the wedding video, I'm not sure if all of you noticed, but maybe some of you noticed, he is reading his vows off of his phone at the altar and our officiant had them printed out. He just didn't want to interrupt him because Finley was nervous. You know, we were both nervous and he like grabbed it from his pocket and was like, I didn't print him. So <laughs> anyways, so I love you, Megan. And all these things he said in his vows and the officiant didn't want to interrupt him and be like, I actually have a copy. And of course, in hindsight as well for photos and videos and whatever, and just for the vibe, I wish that he had pulled them out and been like, I actually have a printed copy of your vows because we were required to email them to our officiant before beforehand so he would have a copy in case we like lost them or got tongue-tied or whatever. But yeah, it's not that serious, you know? When you look back on it, you're just like, LOL. But Finley was embarrassed. He was like, shit, <laughs> why didn't I print them out? It just totally slipped my mind because he wrote them in his notes. <laughs> anyway, my last regret is not waiting until I actually had an idea of my final count of guests to give that to my caterer because you pay per plate and I was literally contracted to pay for more plates than who actually came to my wedding. Not just because of the no-shows, because the um, caterer that I hired, like her food was great, you know, but I had found her myself and probably about like a year or so before I even found my wedding planner, I had hired her. So I started working with her like a year before the wedding on like the menu and how many people I thought were gonna be there and all these little things. And then in March, a couple months before the wedding, we had to give her like a contracted number of people and plates that we were going to pay for. And at that time, I hadn't gotten back all of my RSVPs. So I gave her a higher number than what 
actually came to the wedding and contractually I was not allowed to lower it by more than I think it was five percent or something so I just ended up spending so much more money on catering than I needed to and it was just really an oversight in that capacity so don't do what I did and you would think now with COVID it's like you have this number and you should be able to take away from it and they could just make less food on the day you know and I think most catering companies actually do do that but um I feel like industry standard I was using somebody who had been in the business for like 30 years or something insane and she was like no this is industry standard like to have a number and only be able to um, add to it and she just kept saying it's easier for me to add people on and I was like no I need to take people off and it was just like this big misunderstanding she catered both nights the rehearsal dinner and the actual wedding and both of those nights we had less people than we were contractually paying for so it was just like now I'm just gonna answer a couple of questions off of Instagram and I know I talked for so mother freaking long So I'm gonna keep it short a number one question that I got asked a lot was something that you did that you considered a waste of money Or just not necessary or things that you did that weren't worth it I really don't think especially if you're having an outdoor wedding in the summer that you need to go crazy heavy on flowers I just felt like the flowers were fine at my wedding. I loved them I had loved having sunflowers in my bouquet, but I didn't really want over-the-top and extravagant flowers and I'm glad that I did lower budget flowers than big huge budget of flowers with all these flowers around the arch and all this stuff because my husband and I we love wood accents ferns greenery just like you know good old natural standard a lot of people asked about stage fright and anxiety and stuff like that and I was really worried about this and my friend Carrie Rad here on YouTube told me before the wedding that like love prevails you know you just have this thing wash over you and you're able to get through your vows and I was to a certain extent but I also cried because I was emotional during my vows at certain parts I wasn't sobbing during the whole thing but um in my wedding video and stuff like that you can hear like I was kind of choked up for sure there was a lot of happy tears throughout the wedding and that's fine like that's gonna happen you're gonna show your raw real emotions so you can't really like bypass stuff like that but you can do like meditations and anti-anxiety things on the day to help you if that's something you're worried about and then lastly I'm gonna answer this because I have some opinions about this did the guests actually eat your cake slash dessert option so we had a cake it was cut and served to all of the guests just at their seats but I really wish that didn't happen I wish that people who wanted it could have just come up to the cake table and found it or the band made some announcement being like hey and if you want cake it's over there in the back corner go get a slice you know because there was so much wasted cake and it was amazing cake the catering team just cut it and served it but I thought that they would cut it and serve it like at a table and then people would go up and self-serve I didn't know that it was gonna be served to every seat and by that time in the reception people were getting up and walking around and dancing and not coming back to their seat in some cases so there was just a lot of waste so um, no a lot of people did not actually eat our dessert and it was a fucking sleigh it was delicious lemon cake with raspberry filling and buttercream frosting also don't cut your cake with your back to the reception because I had no idea that we were doing that and we did that <laughs> Anyways, I could talk about the wedding for freaking ever. Um, these are just like the main things that were absolutely amazing and kind of flops as well. But when you throw a big party, I've never thrown a party of this scale in my entire life. That's what I kept reminding myself and after the fact now, you know, like thinking back on it, I'm like, damn, we really did that. Like 125 people coming to show out for us. Like that's wild, you know? And just the fact that so many things went right is what you really need to remember and harp on. And when I look back at photos of the wedding and videos and all of these things, all I remember is the love and joy and dancing to Footloose on the dance floor and, you know, seeing my little ring bearer swinging his arms around and being so happy and me and Finley grinding up on each other no matter who was watching. And just like all of those crazy things. Lindsay doing the fucking worm. Like, it brings tears to my eyes. It's so beautiful and funny and amazing. And that's what weddings are supposed to be. Just sweet love. But I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful to you. And 
hope it wasn't too long. I'm gonna have to edit this bitch down. It's really crazy. I talked for so long about these things. But if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I love talking about weddings and I'm happy to help. Have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. When I'm not on here, you can find me on Twitch three times a week, 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm there live streaming. And then I also have a Patreon for extra content if you want more from me. Okay, I love you. Stay smiling. Bye, y'all.